Hello everyone and welcome to this video. I'm working on a new vehicle, a new very small sort of uh, cargo van or passenger van and in doing so I decided I'm going to give some more advice on how to miniaturize, how to optimize the space and how to make your creations workflow that much easier and that much better for you moving forward. So follow along, hopefully this tip is something new to you and maybe you learned something. As you can see, my new creation is much smaller than even the buckle bull ride, which is behind it. And for me, the buckle bull ride, which is this pickup truck, is one of the smallest pickup trucks that I already managed to optimize the space and items for it. And now this new creation, this new van is supposed to be even smaller. You can see the wheelbase. The front wheels are aligned perfectly and the back wheels are definitely not aligned. So you, it's visibly much more compact and as i was building it i'm like how can i manage to fit all these microcontrollers into it if you know my creations you know i have a bunch of displays and features and eco mode power mode whatever so i wanted to maximize putting in all that good stuff in this new van and not just make it uh very basic i wanted to still have the same options as the trucks do now, in order to do this, you'll have to have one working creation that is good. So in my case, I have the bull ride. So I would always suggest starting with a creation that you've made at some point and you're very happy with it. It has all the latest microcontrollers. In this case, I've updated it. You could see here that this is 7.6, which is my latest version of the engine. The gearbox is V10, which is my latest version of the engine cruise control v3 so you pretty much want a vehicle that is your starting base platform and then you go from there to develop your new one after you've chosen your vehicle you want to do first thing you'll do is you'll obviously create a new vehicle and then just import your um sample next to it like this and then you go ahead and create so you turn on x and now you go ahead and create this uh new vehicle of yours so I always like to start with the body panels and at least the general rough shape because that's going to determine for you your size and your capabilities in size. So I'm, I'm not going to go through the process on how to build a car now, but imagine you wanted like a like almost like a square boxy van. Let's just do this for example here. So you get your van shape and you know, you'll have your windshield and all that good stuff. But as you can see in this case it is smaller so what i always like to do is fully have a donor vehicle that you can extract everything from and what it looks like is this so i always start with the seats so the seats and the dashboard are going to be identical no matter what car i make because as long as it's buckle which is my brand so you'd start like this and you'd put it wherever you want so something like that, for example. And you'd now have to go and put an engine in here. Yes, you can make very compact engines or not, like that's fully up to you, but this, I'm just showing you an, as an example. So I did all this for the new creation, which is gonna be called the Buckle Howdy. So I ended up shoving a tiny little motor in here it should be a six cylinder that's also supercharged. So I imagine it's still gonna have a decent amount of power. It won't have a hood that opens up. Instead, you'll have to work on it from here. That's just how it is. That's a lot of these uh, cargo vans that you find in Europe and Asia will have sort of a very small access to the engine. And usually you have to take out the whole center console to get access to it when it's this sort of like cab over style, but whatever, we're just gonna go ahead with that. And after the engine's built and your seats, you then start to drag your microcontrollers over. Now I've already started here. You can see I have my engine and I have my gearbox. And I literally just took them from here and I drag them over as such. So you position it in your new creation somewhere where it does not clash with an existing component so that would be a good spot for this for example so you then put it you merge it and here you have now your new creation now this is the wrong microcontroller because this is for the gas tanks this one's only gonna have two gas tanks so we're gonna have to do a new one for that but you get the gist you pretty much take this put it into the new one 
and adjust the path for the uh, microcontroller if and when needed. So like I'll give you an example for that here. So you have to still manually check. In this case, my throttle error is going way over there. That doesn't make sense. So you have to then link it to your throttle here. And this is throttle fuel. So same thing, my throttle fuels here. So you still have to go and link up certain things that you did not copy over unless you copied the whole engine from your donor car, in which case then you wouldn't have to. But I made this engine from scratch. So you'd have to then link up some of the new things. You'll also have to link up um, the gas tanks and stuff. But anyway, what I always like to do this orange is then to really make it compact and small. I have it, I create a sheet like this that I actually link it to the car. So it's actually the same body as the car, even though it's floating. And I'll fill it with microcontrollers that I need just to clear out the clutter from here. So in theory, you drag all your microcontrollers to this call it plate or dish and then you would no longer need the donor car you would have now extracted all of the microcontrollers to there and have sort of a nice platform that's clean that you no longer have the donor car but to make it really compact that's where the the trick comes in because when i made for example this guy i built it based off of the Buckle Rodeo. and the Buckle Rodeo, I built I based off a super old platform I had. Like if you go all the way down to my, my trucks, I had a version of the Buckle Rodeo way, way back when that was not at all the same as what you see nowadays. Like I have a much bigger display and stuff. So I kind of just kept this body style going because I liked it, but it is not the most optimized. If you look down here, you have random gaps and spaces where you could actually fit all sorts of things like take a look at that so this is where this next bit comes into place so see what i just did here i kind of dragged and created shown to show everything in this layer where you can place microcontrollers so take a look at all the yellow and that's exactly what i now do for my new style which is this. So the Howdy, and it doesn't matter, you choose any color of your liking, but the, the idea is that you select a point of it where you no long, where you don't have anything. So let's delete some of these. So, and what it'll do is it will highlight your areas where you could place microcontrollers. So you select a corner like this and drag it out like that. And that's that. And we have this part here. So now all the orange, I'm going to replace at some point with something, whether it's a weighted block or whether it's a microcontroller. So you can see here with the way this body style works is I still have a good amount of controllers. And honestly, I'm just going to skip this step here altogether because I found I didn't need it. If it was a more complex creation, I would need it. But in the case of the Howie, it's quite simple and straightforward. So I've determined I don't need to. So you just go down here and you select the microcontrollers. And this is the easiest way to get this thing going. Now, if you do this and hold control, it'll select what is here. So you just go and click all this. So I could go ahead and delete all these. These are just regular cubes and exposes my microcontrollers. And then I take this one and you see there's a bunch of paths that go to the new creation. So I'll need to keep this. So I drag it out here. And this one, I'm going to actually rotate around and position it right down on the side skirt. So I'm gonna maximize my space and put it right here. Of course, because I have this kind of end cap bit, you don't really see that it's a microcontroller unless you look underneath the car, but I'm not too concerned about that. So there we have it. And you can see here that this one does actually bleed onto this guy here, which is the gearbox. So I will have to now adjust this and put it on my new gearbox, but I will do that. And even here, you see that there's some dead channels that don't do anything. And the reason for that is because up here, we only have two buttons on this one. So in that case, I could actually optimize this even further and delete these dead nodes that aren't doing anything to make sure I have enough space for what I have planned. But I do believe, just looking at this, the amount of orange I have down there and the amount of microcontrollers I have left in this truck, that I will be okay, that I'll be able to copy them all over and sort of make it work pretty easily. But this is just sort of the tricks and tactics that I do to ensure that I can create 
more advanced creations and sort of miniaturize and optimize my creations in one. Now the next step of course would be to take this and merge it with my transmission, have everything in one go. And you know, certain things can be joined together like this display could probably be part of this one as well. Like I could have one master car ECU, but I don't wanna do that. I wanna kinda of just stick with what this is cause I have all these other ideas and things that I wanna build. But this in my opinion is the easiest for small to mid-sized creations. You could do this with boats, of course, trains. You could do it with larger boats, almost like a ship, but I wouldn't recommend it for a full size ship because you'd have to have two of them loaded side by side and that could look a little confusing and laggy. But for this, this is the perfect way to transfer over. This is exactly how I built the other cab over truck, which you can see right here. This is a really fun little build and honestly, how I did it, I spawned the stockyard and the uh, buckle, but the stockyard and the um, stampede, sorry. And I extracted portions of those two trucks to create this one. And of course I started with the body style that I liked and then just made sure the engines and everything worked on it. Because you see here, if we get in, into this part, open the engine bay, it reveals the engine. So all this was done very much intentionally to ensure that there was uh, there was space to put all these microcontrollers and you can see they're all kind of lying around here but it doesn't really ruin the overall appeal of the vehicle in size I wanted to minimize the size of this I want it to be quite a small semi truck and honestly I think it worked out quite well so you will see this one hit the workshop quite soon here folks um, until then have a great day. Thank you for watching and as always, happy stormworksing.